Guys, hello again and welcome. It's Ollie the Tea Guru. It's a new year, it's a new camera angle, and we have some new teas. I hope you're all doing very, very well. Uh, today we're talking all about Dan Chong's. Now, it's been um, a long time that I've been wanting to make this video. I absolutely love Dan Chong's. Uh, Danchong is an oolong from Guangdong area, specifically the Phoenix Mountain Range in Guangdong. Why do I love Danchong so much? Well, um, a few factors really. First of all, it's, it's a genre of tea um, that is very unique. They've got some extremely interesting um, flavours going on. The spectrum of flavours is truly outstanding. There's so many uh, flavours that can be achieved through this one genre of oolong tea. For example, uh, magnolia fragrance, almond fragrance, orchid fragrance, ginger blossom fragrance, pomelo blossom, honey orchid, cinnamon, osmanthus, uh, jasmine. There are so many. They've got a history of making Dan Chong in Guangdong area for over 900 years, so it's uh, it's not like they've taken some bushes from Fujian province and plucked them in there, and, and all of a sudden they've 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 got a tea business. They've been doing this for a long time, um, steeped in history and some really interesting teas. We have two teas that we're going to try. Um, we have right here the uh, the duck shit aroma. Interesting story all in itself, this one. And we have Cape Jasmine as well. Cape Jasmine, beautiful tea. So, without delay, we're gonna go straight ahead and try out the duck shit. Oolong. Right, you wanna hear the story about the duck shit? You wanna hear the story about the duck shit, Dang Chong? Let's do it. Okay, so the soil that the uh, duck shit, uh, Dang Chong, um, is grown in has a kind of a yellowy brown look to it, a little bit like uh, duck poo. Um, the story goes that the, uh, the farmers who started growing this type of tea were trying to put off speculation from their neighbours about this tea by saying, oh, we, we grow it in duck shit. And it, you know, uh, they probably said it smells of duck shit. Um, I wonder how many times I can say shit in this video and not get uh, demonetised. Let's find out. <laughs> um, but, but don't worry, um, it doesn't smell or taste of duck shit whatsoever. It is a thoroughly good tea. So we're using um, near boiling water, very hot water. <clears throat> the aromas that you can get off Dan Chong is absolutely spectacular. Wonderful kind of deep sort of baked fruit going on, maybe sort of baked apricot. Maybe something more exotic there as well but that sort of sweet fruitiness. And the flavour, it really boils down to the, um, uh, the roasting that this tea has gone through. So you get two types of Dan Chong. Uh, you get the lighter roast and the more heavier roast. The interesting thing is that <clears throat> there are two tiers of, of Dan Chong really. There's the cheaper stuff where no, you know, they just chuck it out of volume and you get the more pricey stuff, the more sort of artisan stuff. The stuff that goes for a bit more money. And what they'll do is a certain tea farm will have its vendors in, in a city or maybe have a few vendors, but they'll only send them um, a, you know, um, one box or a few boxes of tea. So when you're trying to source this stuff, you've got to be quick because if you wait a few days or a week, it might not be there anymore because the parcels are small. Um, now, the nature of this tea is that um, it, the lighter roasted oolong will be okay for a while. They try and sell it, um, but then after six months or a year or whatever it is, if it hasn't sold, they will do another roast on it and make it a more darker, heavily roasted oolong that carries with it its own flavors, its own aroma, with the, the extra roasting that goes into it, it is very different. Fusion one, after a rinse, wonderful sort of oh, turning green to yellow. That wonderful aroma is still sort of pushing out to me. Yummy. First infusion, lovely kind of uh, papaya, um, exotic fruits, not too strong, not too heavy. 
bitterness and astringency, well, not really bitterness, um, astringency is kind of light and tingly, um, which is a lovely sensation really. Not in your face, just helps put everything together. Um, the consistency is fairly smooth as well, so it's not light, the body's kind of um, medium. Um, I think it all helps put everything together nicely. Fruity, touch of sweetness as well, um, just great, great, great. So now with lighter danchongs like these, um, storage is fairly important for the long term. Um, when we tried um, a load of different vendors' uh, danchongs, um, we did notice a massive difference between the ones that would keep their tea in refrigeration and the ones that simply didn't. Um, there is a big difference in flavour, um, and that's only after uh, you know a few months of them having it, if that. Um, you got to remember that Guangdong is, is, is very hot um, and, you know, these sort of oolongs should be kept at a lower temperature. So um, we always keep these teas uh, in a section of the property, uh, a room uh, that is at the moment 15 degrees or under. So nice and cool. Um, if you're going to drink these teas and, you know, within sort of a, um, a month or so, don't worry. Just, just leave them out if you wish. But if you're going to buy these teas with the idea that you want to um, drink them over, say, six months to a year, then you really should be refrigerating them, which is the best thing to do. More of that sort of tingly um, astringency pushing up. The sweetness is getting bigger. Um, and that sort of, what I would say, papaya note is pushing up even more. Lovely and smooth. It's not too smooth and too much full, um, it's not too full bodied. Um, just enough to make it sort of um, way like it really in, a, in, a, in an oolong. Not too thin, it's, it's, very, it's very pleasant. So danchongs, um, depends how you brew them out, but um, I think these will go for an easy kind of five to six infusions, something like that. Um, things start to get real big for the first two or three infusions. Things start to peter down a little bit. Um, you can't really brew these up uh, big teapot style. Um, you'll just get a heck of a lot of, um, of, of bitterness coming through. Um, a hell of a lot of flavour too, but it's going to be a bit crazy. What I have done is I have um, brewed, these, uh, brewed these teas gong fu uh, for the first, say, three or four infusions. Um, and then if I'm going to go and do some work by the computer or something, I chuck it, um, what's left, into a, into a big teapot. Add a small amount of water, and it's generally okay. It's generally okay. Nice, nice danchong experience after the first few infusions, anyway. Very, very tasty. That sweetness is still sort of clinging to my palate. And if you're one of the people that have tried danchongs in the past, cheaper danchongs, and you're now turned off by the whole genre, you need to reevaluate things because. The cheaper danchongs that we've tried have had very low flavour and very high um, astringency. And sometimes with danchongs, you're going to get this very odd, off kind of sour note that is typical in a lot of danchong. That sour note with the more expensive danchongs um, kind of like is, is laid back, but it's part of the tea. With the cheaper ones, it's too expressive. It's just outright odd and weird. Um, so. If you've tried a few of the cheaper danchongs and found them to be too bitter, too astringent, and not enough flavour, I would ask you to um, reevaluate things by trying something a little bit higher um, grade and, and see what danchongs are really about. Boom it. Let's have another quick infusion while we're here. So it's, <laughs> it, it's a bit hard sourcing these um, in the I wasn't in China to source them. I was getting the samples sent to me, and in a few cases, ones that I really liked, by the time I got them and said, yes, I'd take them, please, they'd already gone. It's frustrating. It's um, the, the, the higher tiered uh, Dan Chong world moves fairly swiftly. Um, you can't be left, you can't be standing around too long because things just happen and they're gone, and then they're gone forever. Um, so, you know, we've got a few kgs of these, um, we're testing out with you guys, and I hope you enjoy them, um, and um, if you do enjoy them, then 
and they sell, I'll, I'll be getting some more in. And we're doing some more Danchongs. Because hey, I go to Guangdong once a year, um, the home of Danchong. Um, and it would be a shame not to really incorporate these in, in our offerings. Sweetness still pushing through. A little bit more vegetative um, notes are, are coming through aroma-wise. But that sort of fruity sweetness, just beautiful. <laughs> so, if you are going to be buying these teas and you are going to be storing them in a, in a cold air of the property, you do have to make sure, um, if you are going to drink them, this is, it might sound a bit annoying, but if you are keeping it in a cold area, um, if you do want to drink them, bring them out of that cold area, leave them somewhere, you know, room temperature for uh, at least a day. Um, and that's going to help kind of wake the tea up a little bit because if you bring that tea um, straight from a refrigerated environment and then brew with it, um, it might not necessarily show all the sort of flavours that, that it can do. So uh, bring it out, leave it at room temperature for uh, 24 hours and then go for it. Um, it's, uh, is that snow or sleet? Well, one thing I know, it's bloody cold. Night time now, a little tea break, break from the tea, tea break. So we're moving on to Cape Jasmine. Just heat up this tea ware quickly. I think I'd go as far to say that the roast is slightly higher with this Cape Jasmine. <clears throat> it's still a light roast, but it's just a little bit sort of Roastier. <clears throat> Wonderful kind of um, tangerine. You know uh, those those mini uh, those mini ripe balls you get that are um, citrus ripes. That kind of um, tangerine, that kind of mini orange smell, coupled with that kind of unique um, danchong twang that you get. Infusion one. I think it's okay to call it a Danchong twang. Um, it's, well it is a twang. It's a little bit of a, it's not sour. It's just sort of a, a bite. It kind of, could be soury, but it kind of adds to the sort of Danchongness. I'm not making any bloody sense. Okay, so this 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 soup looks a little bit deeper than the, um, the duck shit. This one, ooh. that aroma is just oozing with tangerine goodness. More. And when I tasted these, I did notice the. Um, it's called Cape Jasmine. Um, and I, and I kind of got the, the, the jasmine flavour. I could, completely understood that, but I wasn't prepared for the, the sort of the sort of tangerine note that came through. And then, uh, just just really good. I mean, the tangerine flavour usually comes in with more heavily roasted danchongs. The jasmine is there. It's very light, and you have to sort of search for it. But it, it comes through very lightly. Deeper, though, is this sort of this tangerine note, and it's a little bit more sort of astringent. It's got a little bit more body, so you don't need to push this one out as much as the duck shit. So, slight, slight sweetness. The body and, and the smooth nature still there. The duck shit's got more body. It's it's um more sort of lubricating, I think, than this one. But there's not much in it. They're very close, they're very close. The flavor, the, the frontal flavor, a kind of middle palette, which is similar, and the finish is a little bit more sort of perfumey, um, a bit more wafty. Yeah, you, you don't need to push this one out so much. I, I, I left it quite long. Um, so I'd start with sort of five second infusions. You don't need so much, um, the, the tea doesn't need to give so much because you're gonna get more of the bitterness come through. Very good. Mm. 
Round two. That tangerine is sort of wafting through my from my navel cavities. Infusion two, we're going slightly lighter. So I'm rolling back to sort of five second infusions. Kind of half tangerine, half um, jasmine on the aroma. I just find it so interesting how they can how they can get all these aromas from one type of tea, one genre. You know, it splits into so many things. Almond, um, jasmine, tangerine, walnut, all these other weird flowers. Pom uh, pomelo, there we go, that's perfect. Five second infusions. You've still got that flavor, but that bitterness is just, the, the astringency has calmed down somewhat. Everything's got more balanced with, with lighter infusions, I feel, with this one. Yeah, with the, with the duck shit, it's, you can really push it out a little bit more, it's not gonna make you pay for it. Um, this one, you push it out a bit too much, and the tea just goes <laughs> Lots of nice flavor, but you know, you're getting that bitterness that, and the astringency, which you might not want, so keep it down to sort of five second infusion. But yeah, slightly sweet, Jasmine coming through slightly, but that, that, that beautiful sort of rounded um, aging tangerine um, is, is quite dominant, I think. <sighs> mm. Excellent. Well, two very lovely Dan Chongs, hopefully start of, um, of a much larger Dan Chong selection for us here at the Tea Guru. Um, thank you very much for stopping by, and of course, guys, happy cupping.